Well, we're back on the 98 Camry. I bought this car about a year ago. It had 152,000 miles on it. The oil was clean, it was full, and it wasn't due to be changed until about 153 and a half. Since then, I put about 5,000 miles on it. 1,200 miles ago, I changed the oil. And that's really all I've done to the engine since I bought the car. Anyway, I noticed it was smoking, so I changed out the valve cover and the PCV valve. Thought that would solve my problem, and then I saw this, which is a big puddle of oil in my driveway. So then I pulled out the dipstick, and that is, as they say in the business, pretty much empty. Now if you look up under the car, you can see on the frame a lot of oil drips. And that most likely means that either the cam seal or the crank seal or the oil pump seal or all of those seals have been basically blown out of the engine. Now those seals are all old because the engine's got 150K on it, actually 157 at this point, but they shouldn't just blow out like that. And that means I got too much pressure in the crankcase, which the PCV should help to relieve. But it didn't, so now I suspect that either the oil drain holes in the cylinder head are clogged, or I've got a bigger problem. So we're gonna try to diagnose this thing and see if we can resurrect it. Now you can see here that all of the coils are dry, so I don't have a problem with oil in the plug tubes. So I guess that's a good thing. Now I wanna start with the real dumb stuff. Maybe this thing, I mean, we had tons of vacuum pulling into the intake manifold, so that's not a problem. Maybe this thing is clogged. <laughs> nope. And this thing's brand new. But even this old PCV doesn't sound too bad. So next, I guess we'll try to check that vent hose to see if that's clogged up somehow. All right, this thing is old and cracked, but let's see if we can blow through it. Yeah, it blows fine. All right, so let's get this valve cover off and see if we can see anything under there. And I will say that when I was changing the oil, I noticed that the new oil, it took a long time to go down into the engine. So I suspect we have some clogged passages even though the oil was really clean. Now I'm not an expert on this stuff, but to me it looks like right here, it looks like the oil was trying to force its way out from under that gasket. So even though that gasket was brand new, who knows how long it would have lasted. I also want to see if there's any obstructions between here and here. There shouldn't be, so another blow test. No obstructions. Now the last thing I'm gonna do before I go picking today is pour some oil in here and see exactly where it goes down into to see where the passages are that I might need to clean. I don't wanna make a mess on everything though. I don't know, it seems to be disappearing into the uh, Seems to be disappeared into the engine pretty quickly. Uh, maybe not that one. It's kind of hard to get a good shot of this, but we're gonna check this one drain hole behind the cam sprocket and see if that might be clogged. Now nah, it seems to be going down pretty well. So at this point, we don't have any obvious blockages in the venting system, the hoses, the PCV, or the oil drain ports. So the next step is gonna be taking this area apart and I'll probably spend 30 bucks on some new seals and slap that all together. I don't think I'm gonna spring for 100 bucks for a timing belt kit just yet because we don't know if this engine's gonna live or die. So stay tuned for about one second and I'll start stripping that down.
This thing is fantastic. I got it as a gift. Wow, that's ugly. Sparks are bad. Always disconnect your battery terminal. Now I'm stuck. All right, that's out of the way. Before we do all the rest of that stuff, I want to use this coat hanger to uh, go down and check the oil passages to see if they're jammed up. And to check in here to see if that's jammed up. Hmm. I don't know, it feels like there is a little blockage in there. Let's investigate. Wow, how hard is it to get an air box off? It's really hard. What is that stuck on? It's super oily in there, but I don't see any obstructions. There is a gross dead bug though. It looks like somebody's living in my airbox. I don't know if that's poop or if that's some kind of bird seeds or something, but let's clean that out. Gross. Looks like my new electric ratchet is uh, stronger than I thought. Because I just broke off one of those bolts. This thing is awesome by the way. It was a gift from my friend's son. So thank you so much. I'm not taking any chances with these other two bolts. Quarter inch ratchet. Well that was a pain in the balls. Plus I found out that this thing is broken on my car. I don't really know what that goes to, but uh, we'll fix it later. Now I have stuck this coat hanger all the way down my oil drain hole, and I don't feel anything obstructing anything. And it looks like there's some oil in there, so that's good. Anyway, there's very little doubt that my uh, cam and or crank seals are blown, so let's keep trying to get at those. Now I'm stuck. All right. Alright, for these ones, we'll use the big boy. Oops, had it on Titan. That was dumb, right? <laughs> I'm so dumb. This bracket's a pain to get off, so maybe first we'll take off this timing cover. But these screws are rusty. So let's clean them. And I guess we might as well soak them. Wow, I got bad aim. Let's use the little boner thing. I'm 
trying to have a sense of humor about the fact that my car might have completely eaten itself. So one of the more annoying parts of doing a timing belt job on the 2.2 Toyota is this bracket has two bolts like way down in the bottom that are hard to get to. But I think I've come up with a solution to that, which is that I'm gonna undo the motor mounts and then jack up the engine to see if I can get those bolts a little bit higher so I can reach them. Let's see if it works. And of course, anytime you're gonna be jacking on your engine, you need to put a piece of wood on top of the jack to protect the bottom of your engine. That piece of wood was too big. This is the only saw I have. It's the only other piece of wood I have. I'm not a woodworker. I'm not even a mechanic. All this sawdust is making it smell like a lumber store around here. All right, round two. All right, so uh, the jack and the wood is safely nestled under my oil pan. Let's go loosen those motor mounts. Uh, okay. This thing doesn't want to budge. Let's try some more. Nope. This back one's gonna be harder to get to, so let's see if we can uh, even get that one off. Because if we can't get that one off, then we're verily uh, screwed. See that nut tucked way in there? I already soaked it with WD, but that's what we're up against. All right, I've been screwing around with it for like 20 minutes now, and I think my little plan is not gonna work. So let's go to plan B, which is to get the, uh, get the bolts from the bottom. Hasn't got old yet. How much you want to bet that these little 10 mil bolts snap right off? I lose, but in a way I win. So now that we're in here, you can see that everything is just soaked with oil. And I suppose it might just be the uh, oil pan gasket, but I don't see how a bad oil pan gasket could piss through like two quarts of oil in a minute. So I suspect that we have a crank seal, a cam seal, I suspect everything's shot. Let's dig deeper. All right, from the bottom here, this oil pan gasket area looks pretty bad. Like that kind of got blown out. There's more leaking over here, but that could be dripping down from the valve cover. See, the exhaust is in the way, so I don't want to drop the exhaust to do this oil pan, but we might be able to get away with doing it without dropping the exhaust. There's a ton of oil all over here. And the timing cover is soaked too. First I gotta loosen the power steering pump so I can get that out of the way. Or just get the belt out of the way. See those two bolts up there behind the pulley? That's what we're after. I'm not sure I can do that on camera though because this is awkward. That's my arm reaching up in there trying to get that bolt out. Wow. You know, Toyota designs their cars to be easy to fix, except these two bolts. So, I'll take it, whatever. All right, I went and got an assortment of other tools. A sleeker 3 8 ratchet, quarter inch ratchet with a deep 14 mil, an adapter, a long 3 8 ratchet. Let's see if we can get it out. The old Craftsman flex head ratchet that I haven't used in years is getting it done. That's why you keep tools that you haven't used in years. Because you'll use them. All right, let's get the top bolt out and then I'll show you why this thing was so much trouble in the first place. Uh, 
I didn't just drop my ratchet. Oh my God, that bolt isn't. All right, let's see. What else do we have here? Nope, that's not gonna fit in. Gear wrench to the rescue. Here's why this thing has given us so much trouble. Because when you try to put the ratchet in here, it doesn't have enough clearance on this rib right here. So I had to get a smaller ratchet, plus you only got maybe two inches of clearance between the, uh, you know, the inner structure of the car and this thing. So I don't know why they designed this the way they did, but it was a pain. These are some pretty nice looking bolts though. So there's that. So now looking down into the cam cover area, top cam cover doesn't look too messy. This bolt that I was spraying with WD-40 yesterday and scrubbing with a wire brush, it's already broken. So we gotta take a few of these bolts out. Down there it looks pretty messy. I don't know, I'm, I'm curious if it actually is the cam and crank seals or if we're just spinning our wheels here or if it was just the, the oil pan gasket. But this thing went through like two quarts of oil in no time, so there's a big leak somewhere. And so on, you get the idea. All right, let's see if we can pull this thing out now. Wow, it's fighting us all the way. God dang it. All right, here we go. Inside of it is oily-ish. How's it looking down there? Let's see. Looks like that cam seal is junk. And so we're gonna have to deal with that. Can we see down as far as the crank seal? No, I'm gonna have to pop that cover off too. All right, now I'm gonna rotate the engine until I have lined up the timing marks on the cam and the crank. That should do it. I don't know if there's a right way to do this, but this is my way of doing it. I mark the cam gear, the timing belt, the direction of the timing belt. Your little timing hole there is lined up. And way down here on the crank, you can see I've marked the little notch in the crank pulley. I'm not gonna replace this timing belt or any of these pulleys or anything because if I can't fix this oil leak, like if this engine is dead, I don't want to spend the money on a timing kit. So for now, I'm just going to try and replace the seals and see if that solves our problem. And then I'll do the timing job later and maybe make a better video out of that. Now let's see if we can get lucky on this crank pulley. All right. Now let's see if we can get lucky, pull it out by hand without having to futz around with a puller. Ugh. And the answer to that is, no we can't. Quite serendipitously, I do have a puller. But before I use it, I wanna chase the threads of the little puller holes in the pulley. Cause it looks like this car hasn't really been worked on in a long time. So everything's a little bit crusty. All right, let's see if we can pop this thing off. We can almost do it by hand at this point. All right, the pulley's loose, but the puller is stuck, so I'm gonna have to pull the puller off the pulley. I'm gonna go for the glory. I gotta reach in from behind, I guess. There it is. So I am not a car repair expert. In fact, I'm learning as I go. 
and I'm also not a video making expert, which is why the lighting sucks. But I would say that even somebody who's not an expert can determine that the uh, crank seal has failed. Look at all this greasy, oily schmutz there. So let's replace it. So now that I've made all my fancy markings and whatnot, I can release this tensioner pulley, which uh, should allow me to remove that timing belt. See, once you let go of that bolt, then you can push the pulley down. Oh, I, I see, you gotta do it two-handed. Hold on. All right, so what I have to do is loosen that bolt, which I've already done. Oh, and then try to pull the ratchet off. Flip the ratchet so it's in tightening mode. Now, I push the pulley down against its spring pressure and hold it down. Wow, that's tough. It's a good spring in there. Push the pulley down and hold it down while I tighten it. And now the pulley is tight, but it's tight in the loose position. So we can just pop this good old fashioned timing belt right out of the way. Arr! Don't damage your timing belt. Or you'll have to buy a new one that's 40 bucks. Here are the things I like about this timing belt. First of all, it's a genuine Toyota. And second, it doesn't seem to show a ton of wear. I mean, if this oil seal repair works, then I'll replace this anyway, but, you know, I think we can run this for a while. So now that we're back down in the under drawers of the car, let's pull this little uh, pulley off. I don't know, I mean, does it look to you like two quarts of oil came out of that in a minute? I mean, it's oily as hell, but maybe the problem is with the oil pump seal. Can you see that in there? You know, I really thought I was going to see something here that was an obvious catastrophic failure. The crank seal doesn't look like it's totally blown out. The oil pump is a real mess though. And the cam seal, yeah, I can see oil coming down from there. So let's get to work. I'm gonna take the oil pump out. That's 10 millimeter bolts. I'm not gonna try and record it because this is such a pain in the butt. But you can figure out how to remove 10 millimeter bolts. Get a 10 millimeter socket and go counterclockwise. But you will have to remove this idler pulley first. I hope all these seals work because I really want to do a timing belt job on this car. It's gonna be a lot of redundancy, isn't it? Now I'm feeling a lot better about this repair because I have found a catastrophic failure, which is the oil pump O-ring. Look at this thing. That is not supposed to break off in pieces like dry spaghetti. Holy cow. <laughs> that is a disaster. That could be our whole problem. Damn, son. You can see the rest of the seal up here. It's just totally petrified wow no wonder this thing uh had some issues so now we've wrapped an old timing belt around the sprocket on the oil pump so that we can hold it with these giant channel locks and use a 12 mil to ow oh oh my god i just whacked my hands my fingers between there and there that hurts so bad but we got the thing off so that was good ish so now we're gonna pull this off oh my finger still hurts and we're gonna replace that dumb little seal in there
Uh, I don't know how to get that out. This is one of those things they use to open paint cans. That seal is petrified. Does not want to come out. Oh wait, you can take the whole thing apart. Now it'll come out. Better come out. <sighs> Jeez. That is all broken up too. Not good. Now in case you're curious, here's the parts kit that includes the crank seal, the oil pump seal, and the oil pump o-ring. And this cost $11. So yeah, my engine blew up because of, an, well, didn't really blow up, but all the oil peed out of it because of an $11 worn out part. And I mean, this o-ring it's not 11 bucks on its own. The whole kit is 11 bucks. All right, I've smeared a little oil around this O-ring to help it go in better. It's not an O-ring, it's a seal. I think this is one of those ones you can just push it in with your thumb. Ugh. That's good. Oh, remember when I hit my um, finger before? It doesn't really hurt anymore. It's kind of like down to a dull throb, so that's good. According to the internet, this gets torqued to 21 foot-pounds, and I hope the internet is right. Because I did have one of these pulleys fall off one time, and it was ugly. All right. Things ready to go back in, I guess. So I'm pretty sure this O-ring is supposed to go in dry but it was not staying in place, so I had to use a couple little dabs of goop. And hopefully that doesn't come back to bite me in the ass, but at this point, you know, who really cares? It's an $800 car that's dumping oil on the ground at an alarming rate, so what do I have to lose? It took exactly forever to get that thing lined up. And it's 30 degrees out, and the sun's going down, and I'm lying on my cold driveway, so... uh we got it done. Now let's try to get that thing out of there. Well, I'm trying to use my uh, little paint can opener tool. This is an idea I got from Hardly Moving Productions, but it's just bending. So let's try the Lyle tool that I bought. This is what this thing is. Let's see if it works. I feel bad about that, I really do. I was futzing around with it, trying to figure out how it works, and the seal came out. And I didn't catch it on video, but basically you like dig that little hook in right there and pull the seal out. Let's put the new one in. Here's a side note. I just found one of my wheel weights on the ground under the car. I don't know where it goes, but this is the only spot on the rim that's hacked up. So let's uh, install it there. I'll let you know if the car wobbles. Everything's really gross down here. I don't think you're really supposed to spray brake cleaner where oil could come in and out, but I'll change the oil. I don't think the car's got any oil in it right now anyway. What am I worried about? New seal from uh, Philpro that I bought at AutoZone. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know, I guess we just kind of push it in. Alright, now I need something to drive it in with. Let's see. I got this piece of PVC pipe that's about the same size as the, uh, as the doohickey. 
So I'm gonna hold that and uh, whack it. All right, I got my PVC pipe. I got my little hatchet. And let's uh, gently tap at this thing. You know, I think that pretty much worked. It's not all the way in. I'm gonna have to finesse it a little bit, but it's looking good. Come take a look. See, we just have a few millimeters to go. And we'll be fine. All right, let's look at this oil seal. It's not broken. This is actually what I thought the problem was gonna be. I thought this was gonna be just totally blown out. It's not broken, but it's really stiff. It's like totally petrified. So we can just throw that one in the bin. All right, now let's see if we can even think about doing this cam seal before I freeze to death. And I've got a big adjustable wrench on the cam to prevent it from turning. I guess that worked. I hope I didn't whack into one of my cam lobes with this big adjustable wrench though. Most of the bolts in this car, um, uh, all right, we'll get that later. They're tight for like a few threads and then they're not really so tight after that. That is, how does this cam gear come off? Um, Two-handed, I guess. I decided to put on gloves just in case the car bites me. There it is. I don't know why that's so uh, crazy to me. It's like the whole car is disassembled now. You know, this is the part where like, if you were a kid, your mom would come in your room and go, your whole car is pulled apart now. How are you gonna get to work? And then she goes in the house and sees the greasy handprints all over everything and the whole total complete mess that you've made all over the driveway and... You're grounded, Buster. This Lyle tool feels like it has the potential to work really well, but so far I don't really have the hang of it. So like, I got the thing out, but I don't think I got it out right. But, you know. At least we got that dramatic footage, right? So here's your cam seal. It's old. It's stiff. But, uh... It is not really our failure point. I think it was that oil pump O-ring that blew out. And I think maybe the PCV valve had something to do with it. Or maybe that's just a coincidence, so... Whatever. All right, now I'm just trying to clean this surface as well as I can with some paper toweling, soaked in brake cleaner. It's really kind of gummed up in there, so I'll have to go at it for a while. All right, so this thing's fully oiled and it is not gonna just press in. That's not how these ones work. So we're gonna have to come up with a contraption to get it to go in right. Here's the contraption that I invented to press this thing in. It's two hard rubber discs and a big washer and the cam bolt and washer. And the hard rubber discs, they push against the seal and they push it in. And as you tighten it, it just kind of gently squeezes it in. And I invented it this way because this is all the junk that I had around. And I suppose someday I will buy a seal installing tool, but someday is not today. And in case you're curious, while I was doing that, I was using a different adjustable wrench to hold the crank, uh, the camshaft, because the other one had a huge head on it and I was afraid it was gonna hit that lobe right there. I love adjustable wrenches. Here's revision B of my invention, which is loosely based on PVC pipe. Patent of applied for. And yeah, I know, I already said it, they sell tools for this. Link in the description. <sighs> all right, that's all you need. Just a few foot-pounds of torque on the PVC installer kit. Guess what happened to the PVC installer kit after I loosened it up? <sighs> yep, it fell right on the ground. Oh, 
And there's part of the oil o-ring. Look at that thing. It's like black spaghetti that's not cooked yet. Now we are gonna torque this bad boy. If we can get the torque wrench on there. Ah, to 40 foot pounds. All torque specifications, courtesy of the internet. Don't assume that they're correct. Oh. Clickety, clickety, click. I want you to listen carefully to something. Now, in case you couldn't hear that because of all the cars flying by, um, that was the idler pulley. The bearings in it are shot. That's the tensioner pulley. Bearings in that are on their way out. That's the water pump, which doesn't feel great. Now, the problem I have here is the engine was smoking, which means the engine could be totally fried. But I think I figured out where the catastrophic oil leak was coming from, which is the oil pump seal. So at this point, I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to gamble and buy a full timing kit for this, which is about a hundred bucks. Do these pulleys, do the water pump, do a new timing belt, and hopefully with the new seals and everything done up right and the new valve cover gasket and the new PCV, uh, we can keep running this engine for a while and maybe the smoking will go away or maybe we're flushing 130 bucks down the toilet for the timing kit and all the seals. But as usual, I will see you uh, in a minute, either, either in a minute or if I decide to make this into two parts, then in the next video, but probably in like a second. But it's going to be cold and for the next few days, so... I won't see this car until then. I ordered my parts from Rock Auto on Saturday. It's now Monday. They're here. I don't know how they do that. But you got your uh, timing belt, various assorted gaskets, your uh, pulleys, and the water pump, and I opted for the one with the housing. Here's the, I don't know if that's the inlet or outlet tube. That was supposed to be aluminum on the website, but they sent me a plastic one, no big deal. They said the thermostat wasn't gonna be here till Friday, so I decided to get that locally at uh, AutoZone. So, here you go. Duralast Gold, which is a rebranded Moto Rad. Cost twice as much at AutoZone, but I figured I'd have it here in time. But I guess I would have it here in time even if I got it through Rock Auto. But it would have been extra shipping because it was shipping from a different place. Anyway, and uh, now let's burn what's left of the daylight digging into this thing. I guess we've got to get this thing all the way out of the way. What are the chances of me not losing that nut? Take it off. Pop that off. I probably need a new alternator because this one's super old. And it looks like I need just about everything on this car. Ugh. Wow. All right, before I break it, let me uh, finesse it a little bit. I actually realized that I don't need to uh, remove the wiring from this. There's one little 12 mil in here. Let's get that out. So there's your alternator. Ah, it's a stuckernator. Doesn't want to come out. All right, so what we'll do, 
we can leave that right on there. And we will go get this bolt that fell out. Oh, God. And we'll put it right back in here. That way, there we don't lose it. All right, so now I guess we got to remove. Um, what do you want to do first? These pulleys? I mean, we already took the idler pulley out, so I guess we can do the tensioner next. I don't think we're going to be able to get the electric socket thingy in here. So we'll use this old-fashioned ratchet. Also, today's one of those days where it's like... It's just cold enough that I'm starting to be sad about being out here. There's your uh, tensioner pulley and spring. I don't think that's the original one because it's obvious somebody's been in here before, but it's old. All right, now we're gonna liberally douse the uh, water neck studs with WD-40. Hopefully those won't be stuck. Now we'll put our ice bucket, I mean drain bucket under the car. That's, uh, looks like it's in about the right spot. Let's see how this thing works. Uh, it's too big, it doesn't fit in. I guess that's the one drawback of the, uh, the Husky 12 volt lithium ion model number H38C Pratt. It's a little, uh, Husky, otherwise a beautiful tool. Link in description, probably not. All right, let's see if this quarter inch ratchet will do the... Ah! Whoa, that was tight. I'm not a tool collector, but you know what? I'm gonna start being a tool collector because it's awful handy to have all these tools around. So I think what I'm gonna have to do is what I didn't want to do, which is take the hose off of the neck. I wanted to pop the hose off of here to minimize spillage, but it's just not gonna work. So in the meantime, we'll get these little nuts off of here. That's good enough. Now I've got this nut threaded onto this stud because this nut doesn't want to come out of the uh, socket. So I gotta wiggle it off. This is the nut from down below here. Came off pretty good even though it's kinda a little bit rusty. Let's see if it's all going in the pan. Ah, uh, mostly. <laughs> all right, we'll get this nut the rest of the way off down here. And then my strategy is just to keep this vertical you know, so you don't have any more leaks out of that hose. I wonder if I should replace that hose. All right, so there's your, uh, there's your water pump. That's what that looks like. There's my crappy gummed up old thermostat. Wow. You know, I'll, I'll teach you a lesson right now. Just because you buy a car and it runs real great and everything, doesn't mean that it needs uh, zero maintenance. Because wow, 
I think this car needs one of everything. All right, so if I'm looking at the new water pump correctly, I think there's only four bolts that hold this thing in place. One of them is that bolt. And that also holds the uh, alternator tensioning bracket, so let's not lose that. And then I think it's just these three 10 mil bolts right there that hold it in. The water pump is a sealed unit, sort of. And the two halves come apart. But, I guess when you're taking the whole thing out, you don't have to split it. And if my calculations are correct, that thing should be ready to come out. And notice that two of these are uh, longer than the other ones, so there's that. I think I figured out where to insert the prying apparatus. Ah! Nope. Did I screw something up here? No, I think I got it right. All right, I got a larger pry bar, so this way my hand is hopefully out of the way. Wait, I think it's, I think it's budging. I don't know, does that one hold it in place too? Let's go inspect the, uh, the new pump. All right, one, two, three. Which ones did I take out? Huh, interesting. See right here, it's supposed to be a Phillips head. So whoever installed this one before, they just went ahead and held it in place with that. All right, so we got one more bolt. Oh, by the way, this is not a how-to video. This is just like... me learning as I go video. All right, and I think we need to move the catch can a little bit. That should probably do the trick. If at first you don't succeed, pry, pry again. Ugh. I think now we're just kind of stuck on Yeah, we're stuck in there. Let's get a Scroogey. Nobody ever called it a Scroogey until that movie, by the way. And we can use the Scroogey to pop this thing out. Well, that seems pretty loose. Oh, that's what's holding it in place. Just that. Can you see that? There's an O-ring deep in there somewhere. Oh, wow. The struggle was real. Now I guess we can just fish this thing out of here. And, uh, I don't know, what do you think? 
that looks like it has <laughs> done all the pumping it's going to do. The only thing that bums me out about this is the new one, oops, the new one has no studs. So we're going to have to do some stud extraction. And I'll tell you what, let's do the stud extraction. That'll be like our last thing for today because it's cold and dark and everything. All right, so what I've done here is I put the two nuts really, really tight against each other on the stud. And hopefully that'll allow me to use the nuts as a stud extractor. And it looks like it's working. Now I do have a stud extractor, but I'm not really sure how uh, how destructive it is on the threads. I wonder if they have a water pump stud kit at AutoZone. They seem to be the only ones who have these little parts for this particular job in stock so oh my god my hand is freezing right now I know the water pumps usually hot because it's pumping hot coolant through the car but in this case it's been sitting for days and it's like an icicle I don't know why I'm holding it I don't know why I'm not wearing gloves but, there's your stud, and uh, I feel like a stud for getting that out. I'll see you in a couple of days, which for you is a couple of seconds. So it's a week later, and I haven't done anything on this car. I don't know why, but when I get like halfway through a job, I start freaking out. It's like... I lose faith or something. Plus the weather's been garbage lately. But it's not really that. It's just this weird thing that I get where I'm almost like terrified to go out and work on the car. Plus the, uh, the aspect of video that also I think has something to do with it where You know, recording these repairs makes them a little bit more complicated. Actually, that O-ring came off a little bit easier than I thought it was going to. I think right here and right here and right here are ceiling surfaces for the water pump. So we got to make sure they're clean before we put the new parts in. And there's a lot of debris on the engine block behind them. So I don't want any contaminants to get in there. I would say if you're going to do a job like this and you have access to the equipment, maybe pressure wash the engine before you start getting in here. But I don't have a pressure washer. Down in here we're dealing with cast iron, so we can just get in with a uh, knife blade. Clean the surface carefully. If it were aluminum, you gotta be real careful because you don't want to nick the aluminum. But you just gotta get that surface so it's nice and clean so the gasket will seal. Or actually, I think in this case it's, a, it's an O-ring, which is even better. Cleaning the bolts as well as I can with this wire brush. They're in pretty rough shape, but I don't have any new bolts. Now I'll give them a little spritz, just so they go in easier. I've assembled the pump. These studs went in pretty easily, cleaned and uh, spritzed the threads. Thermostat only goes in one way. Rock Auto sent me this plastic neck. It was supposed to be aluminum, but I don't think it matters. And that is an ASIN pump. It was either by a, a cheap kit at uh, AutoZone 
or buy the more expensive kit on Rock Auto, but Rock Auto is cheaper, so it kind of worked out the same. So I'd say go to Rock Auto and get the better parts. This was, the whole kit was like, I don't know, 110 bucks. With this and the pulleys and the belt, so you can't really go wrong. And this was like an extra 20 bucks. All right, so we got two O-rings. I think, well, now we have no O-rings. I think this O-ring goes in here. And this one goes on the uh, on the pipe right here. I don't know where this gasket goes. Like it fits on there, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. And then that one goes there. I don't know if they want you to double up on these gaskets. That's kind of confusing to me, so I'm going to have to check it out and figure it out. Well, when I look at it, it looks like this gasket fits on that really well. But it does not fit. Like, it fits on there. So I think that you're supposed to put these two gaskets in. We'll, we'll see. We'll see if coolant comes pouring out of it when we start the engine, right? Well, I fished the old water pump out of the scrap pile, and... I don't think that really gives us any information. Well, actually, kind of does give us some information because look at the look at the pattern there. Right? If this was in here, then you wouldn't have that right there. So, I think we should use that one. And maybe uh I don't know. No, I don't think you're really supposed to put RTV on these types of ones, but maybe I'll put a little on anyway. What I did see online, I think from Hardly Moving Productions, or maybe some other person, was to lubricate this O-ring and this and the coolant pipe with uh, silicone lubricant. So that's what I'm going to do. I definitely need a new tube of this crap. Both these tubes are... Uh, Kind of on their last legs. All right, for better or for worse, I've put a schmear of RTV. Now I'm gonna drop this on here. Maybe I'll put another schmear on the other side. And those of you who do this for a living, like God bless you, but you're probably laughing right now that this is taking me so long, but I'm really freaking out. I don't wanna to have to redo this just cause of some stupid gasket. On the other hand, I also don't wanna to have to redo it because I put RTV where it didn't belong, so. Either this is going to work, or in a few months you're going to see a video titled My Water Pump is Leaking Because I'm a Dumbass. That went in almost too easily. So either it's a good idea to use quality parts and a lot of preparation, or I screwed something up and this is going to blast coolant all over the engine compartment as soon as I start it. Let's hope for the best. This is where it pays to have a lot of tools. Look. I got the quarter inch ratchet going under here with a, with a bunch of extensions to get to these nuts. And I'm going to torque them to, you know, tight, but not too tight. That's why I'm using the quarter inch ratchet. Isn't that beautiful? So there's our water pump installed, torqued ish, sealed, I hope. And I mean, on this side, we're gonna know if it leaks right away. And luckily, if this side does leak, we have this bolt right here that we can take out to get this pipe out of the way. So we don't have to remove the entire thing. And hopefully that side won't leak. And since we bought the whole pump with the housing, we don't have to worry about this seam leaking as long as ASN assembled it correctly. So it's getting cold and I will see you probably in another week, which for you will be in one second. See you then. Well, it's not a week later, but we got real bad news. I went to tighten down the idler pulley, which threads into the oil pump housing down here. And let's take a look at the uh, carnage. Yeah, that's the thing that happened. The bolt threaded into the housing and the housing ate itself. So either A, I'm going to have to do an entire oil pump on this car. 
or B, I might be able to get away with just uh, putting some JB Weld in there, tighten it up, and hoping for the best. So I'll ponder it while the weather gets warmer, and I'll let you know in uh, about one second. But this kind of sucks. Well, we're in luck, I guess, because it turns out I have a brand new oil pump that I bought when I was working on that car. And all I needed off this oil pump was a little gear doohickey. So, looks like this oil pump should fit in that car just fine. It's a huge job, but we're already in the middle of a huge job, so why not make it more huge? So I'll see you in a second, and this video is going to be probably my longest video ever. Yay me. So you talk about adding insult to injury. This is what's left of the oil pump threads on the bolt. Just comes right off like a crappy little aluminum slinky. Well, you gotta be kidding me. Maybe we can helicoil that or something. But I don't know, a helicoil kit is probably like 30 or 40 bucks, so probably better to just put in that oil pump, right? Actually, it looks like we might not be totally effed in the A after all, because it looks like there's some threads in the block behind that oil pump, and we might be able to catch those threads. All we gotta do is get a longer bolt, and it's kind of an interesting looking bolt, but maybe we can make something work. All right, it's the next day. We still got a little sunlight, so I am going to start dropping the oil pan off of this car or start the process of getting to the oil pan first i gotta drop the exhaust and i'll show you that in a minute now i'm not mad that i got to do this oil pan because if you look over here in my driveway this car needs an oil pan gasket too quite desperately so anything that i do over here on this car is practice for this car so let's go underneath it and I'll show you what we're up against. All right, the exhaust is connected up in there with three nuts that are on studs. I suspect the studs are gonna come out. Then you got a hanger right there and I think there might be an O2 sensor back there somewhere that I'm gonna have to disconnect. The hanger, I'm nervous about taking those two bolts out because they'll probably break if I try to pull them out of the frame. So I might just pop that thing out of the hanger if I can. And then over here, the oil pan. See, this sucks. It's just that one exhaust, the, like the flex pipe is in the way, but the oil pan, I mean, it's just an oil pan, so it's got, you know, 15 or 20 little 10 mil bolts. I've already drained the oil out of it. As you can see, the thing's dripping a little bit. And there's oil all over everything back here, so maybe that'll help us. Anyway, I'm gonna get to work on these. I'm gonna try 14 millimeter, half inch drive, six point, and we'll see if we get it. Wow, I had no idea it was gonna be that easy. I think I'll switch to the Ugga Dugga gun. That was easy. As I suspected, the whole stud came out, which is not a problem as long as it comes out one way or another. And uh, I scraped up my big Milwaukee gun. That's so sad. Can we buff that out? All right, the other two nuts came off. That was so painless. Uh, all right, let's see if I can get uh, that exhaust bracket off. Hmm. All right, here goes nothing on the exhaust bracket. All right. I can't believe that worked out. Oh, really? Now we can't get in there. Oh, we'll get in there. Mother effort. There you go. 
I really have no idea how guys uh, record videos underneath their cars, but you know, basically the exhaust is free now. All right, you can't really see this too well, but there's a lot of nuts and bolts, brackets and whatnot that have to come off before this thing's out of here. And I'm gonna stop fooling around and get it done. All right, I got everything out. I would not go as far as to call it an ordeal because uh, it was kind of pretty easy, but I would recommend if you have access to a lift, do this job on a lift. Now we gotta try to break the oil pan off of the uh, off of the car. I don't want to bend the lip of the oil pan by prying too much. I'm not too worried about this oil pump though. All right, a little gentle persuasion with a screwdriver. And I got my catch can, my uh, drain pan down there just in case. And there she blows. Wow. Uh, okay, this is where we're going to stop for today, and uh, I'll see you next time it isn't 20 degrees outside. That's one second from now. It's really cold and I've been lazy, so I haven't really been working on this car for about a week. But there's the oil pan, it's been draining, it doesn't look awful. I mean, it's got some ugly crusties on it. And it's real filthy. Let's get it over here where we can uh, take a look at it. I don't know, it's got a lot of old RTV on it. And that's probably been leaking for a while. That's greasy and grimy. Normally I would just hit it with brake cleaner, but that stuff is getting expensive. So I'm gonna try this full strength citrus cleaner, which is like 11 bucks a gallon. We'll see how it goes. All right, I don't have like a basin or anything, so I'm just gonna do this over my garbage bin on a cardboard box and just totally soak it. Let it sink in for a while. This stuff is really good at, you know, dissolving grease, but I don't think it's gonna dissolve this really thick, crusty grease. So we might have to do multiple applications there. That should be enough. And if I just did that with brake cleaner, it would have been like a $3 can of brake cleaner. So how much of this did I use? 12 cents. I don't have a putty knife or a plastic scraper, but maybe this piece of stiff cardboard will do something. I guess as long as it doesn't fall down into the bin. Wow, look at that. That is just years of, probably years of this thing leaking on itself. Damn. We might need a new piece of cardboard. Or a parts washer. Had to make myself some more cardboard scrapers. First one wore out. And I'm getting gloves on now. This thing is greasy. Gross. The one problem I'm having is that this citrus cleaner, as far as I can tell, is water-based. So as I'm spraying it on, it's kind of freezing. Cause it's probably, I don't know, 20 degrees out here today. But other than that, see all, all this schmutz here? This is just like frozen water from the cleaner. But other than that, it's looking pretty clean-ish. 
and those are the scrapers and paper towels and had to use this to get rid of some ice. What a mess. This is why you do this right over your uh, garbage can. And that's what the oil pan looks like. It's not perfect, but it's way, way better. I'm a little bit concerned about all this rust and pitting here, but the way I figure it is, if it starts leaking out of here, I can just sand it down on the car and put on some JB Weld. So we're gonna run with this. Now I gotta get off all this old gasketing material, which I'll probably do with a razor blade. See how much I can get off just with my gloved hand. There's some debate online as to whether you should use a gasket on these or just use sealant. I have both. I think I'd rather just use a gasket because sealant's kind of tricky, but I gotta get cleaned off first. Actually, it's coming off kind of okay-ish just with the paper towels. Like, it's not getting all of it, but it's getting more of it than I thought it would. Screwdriver's doing all right for like these little crevices here. It's hard to hold the thing still though, because I'm holding the camera with the other hand. But it's coming out. I don't know why they put all these little dimples on here though. That seems a little bit weird to me. According to what I've read at the factory, they didn't use a gasket, but I guess you can get one now. All right, I went inside and got a utility knife blade. So, I would say between this utility knife blade and our screwdriver and paper towels and cleaner, we will uh, get this nice and clean. There's a lot of little stubborn uh, flakes and stuff in here. I've seen guys hit these with wire brushes. I don't wanna do that because my feeling is that the thing is painted for a reason. So I'm gonna try this nylon brush. First, I'm gonna soak this with, uh, I don't know, WD or degreaser. Try that, see how that works. And if worse comes to worst, I'll go find a steel bristle brush, which I, I don't know where mine is though. All right, I've totally soaked the sponge in WD and it seems to be working okay. The idea is that hopefully the WD will kind of loosen up some of the adhesive in this rubber crap or in this RTV. But I guess technically the RTV is the adhesive. But it's doing something. Let's, uh, let's give that brush a try though. All right, I soaked the brush with WD. So, it doesn't really seem to be working that well. I would say, you know what, like if you're gonna do this job and you don't wanna destroy all the paint on here with a wire brush, just get ready to put some time into it because there's just a lot of little divots which must be here for a reason, probably for strength, but they're holding a lot of uh, RTV. Well, I wouldn't say it's perfect, but it's good enough. I mean, the closer you can get to perfect, the better, but this is like a 25 year old, 24 year old car part. Citrus degreaser worked pretty well. It did have a tendency to freeze. WD-40 worked pretty well to clean off some of the remaining goop. I love this sprayer, that was like two bucks at Home Depot. Nylon brush was pretty worthless. This uh, sponge, when I soaked it with WD, actually worked pretty well. I will most likely blast this out with brake cleaner and, and do a little bit more clean up here and here and here. I didn't kill the paint, some scratches, but I'll probably give it one final cleaning with brake clean. This side's looking all right. We got some pitting there, it's not the end of the world. 
uh, some paint loss here and there. The main area that was really, really disgusting was over here. And that's pretty much all gone, all that uh, grease and grime. So maybe I'll, uh, obviously I'll include this in the bigger video, but maybe I'll make like a, a separate shorter video just on, on how I did this part of it. I would expect to spend about an hour doing this for this particular oil pan. And it wasn't a bad process except it's so cold today that the, the Zep kept freezing. So now we got to clean the mounting surface on the car and reinstall this, but uh, I'll do that a different day because I'm freezing. I figured out that the best way to deal with a daunting car repair is to just do it in bite-sized chunks. So today I'm going to try to get out this oil pump. I don't know if you can even see that. The lighting is really bad. But first we got to get out that pickup tube, which I think is two 10s and a 12. Then the oil pump itself is a bunch of 10s. And I think that's it. Here's your pickup tube. I can't imagine that whatever that is, is good for the engine. That's probably why it has a screen on it. So we'll clean that. Clean that surface right there. That bolts to the oil pump. And this bolts to uh, some kind of assembly inside the engine. Pretty simple so far. Some of these bolts have been what I would call uncomfortably tight. Plus there's a sensor here that fits onto like a little dowel pin. And I gotta get that out without damaging it. So I've been really taking my time, even though this just seems like a simple job. I don't wanna screw anything up. You can see on the new oil pump, this is where that sensor fits right on that pin. And what I've also been doing is taking the bolts out of the old pump, putting them into the right spots in the new pump so I can keep track of them. 10 minutes of gentle finagling later, we got this thing off. Let's brake clean it a little bit. I guess that should do. Last couple of bolts, like this one and this one, I think I can get from the top. And then maybe there's one more and this whole pig can come right out of the car. Actually, there's a few more bolts right here. Right around the gear area. And once those are out, this thing is out. This pump is really stuck in here. All the bolts are out, but I think this is... Oh, nope, that's why it's stuck. One last bolt. Lesson learned. <laughs> Take all the bolts out and the oil pump comes out. Now here's my one concern. See how that says Toyota, which means it's probably the original pump. This thing I got at the parts store when I was messing around with the 96 Camry because I needed this gear wheel right here. So this is a cheap advanced auto parts pump. I don't have a lot of faith in it, but I'm not gonna go on Rock Auto and order one of these right now. So I gotta swap this over swap the o-ring over because i took the o-ring out of this one and i don't know if i'm going to install this today because like i know you pro mechanics are probably laughing at me right now but this is super stressful you know just wondering what's going to go wrong with this job next oh and here's the uh here's the hole that the idler pulley is supposed to bolt into that's the hole that's stripped out that's requiring us to replace this entire pump so if i had more time Absolutely, I would go get an ASIN pump, but we're gonna run what we brung. And once again, this goofy little O-ring, which costs like $2.50 on Rock Auto, is the entire reason that we have to do this huge job. There's no real getting around it, but that does kind of suck. All right, the oil pump is ready to go in but I have to prepare the surface of the engine. So let's see how hard that's gonna be. All right, the lighting is crap, so I have to show you this from the top, but basically this whole surface around here has to be super clean. So I'll take care of that now. Now see, look at this. It's got the original gasket on there, which is really kind of breaking up, but this is, 
like a metal gasket. That's a nice gasket. I'll show you the one that's in the kit with the new oil pump. This is like the world's cheapest paper gasket. I'm almost afraid to use that. In fact, I think I'm gonna go to uh, go to Advance and see if they got a good one in stock. Honestly, I don't really know what to think. This gasket doesn't look great, but wait a minute. I think I have another one that came with the cam and crank seals. Hold on. Yeah, we're in luck. Good thing that the guy at AutoZone sold me this whole kit. Now this is not a metal gasket, but it looks way nicer than this crummy little piece of crap. Yeah, all right, I think we'll, uh, I think we'll go with that. Well, it may not look clean, but it's about as clean as it's gonna get in there. And uh, now it's time to put the oil pump in, which I'm gonna do off camera, I'm sorry, but I wanna be super careful. Felpro says this gasket should go in dry, but I'm gonna use a couple little dabs in non-critical sealing spots just to hold it in place and see how that works. Also, I've oiled the hell out of the oil seal, so that'll slide on easier. All right, it's in there. Now I just gotta install all the bolts and tighten them to, I think, seven foot-pounds, which is like just tight enough with the quarter inch, hopefully, because I don't have a seven foot-pound torque wrench. Well, there it is, for whatever it's worth. Hopefully I got the torque right. I didn't tighten them all at once, you know, I did a little at a time. Put the sensor back on. Now I'll just put that pickup tube on. And then we get to see if we can torque our idler pulley to 31 pounds. Cause that's why we had to replace this one. Cause these threads stripped out. Pickup tube is in place and torqued down to seven foot pounds ish. Just occurred to me, this might be one of the most complicated car repair jobs I've ever done. Anyway, we're gonna put some get all over yourself Tin Man paint, AKA anti-seize on this bolt. This bolt that has to thread into that cheap, crappy, no brand name, oil pump and be tightened to 31 foot-pounds. Oh, I hope this works. I've turned the microphone around so hopefully we can hear the click together. It hasn't stripped out yet. Oh, I'm so worried. 31 foot pounds and the mother didn't strip. All right, a little preview of the next phase of the job. I got to clean all these mounting surfaces. Then I got to decide whether I'm going to use an oil pan gasket or just more RTV like is already on here as shown here. Then I got to put the oil pan back on with this exhaust sort of in the way. Stay tuned for one second, which for me will probably be like, I don't know, two days from now, week from now, month from now, five years from now. Yeah, this project is taking a month. Sorry. All right, I may have been too mean earlier to my new oil pump. It is a Melling. I recognize that name, so. I wish it was an Aeson, you know, or an actual Toyota factory part, which I think is made by Aeson, but Melling's good, right? This isn't too bad. Like, it's not that dirty. We got some daylight left, so I'm gonna get this done now. Mostly off camera. It's really tight under there, but I got the gasket that I ordered for that car, and I'm gonna go ahead and use it, because it seems to make a lot more sense than uh, Actually, I don't know. 
This surface here kind of worries me. It doesn't really clamp. There's no clamping there. Hmm. Two holes in the gasket. All right, maybe we'll smear some, uh, some RTV on that area. Anyway, I've decided to go for it now, so next time you uh, hear my voice, I'll probably be showing you the pan installed. Well, since today was gonna be one of the few warm days they're gonna have in a while, I decided to go ahead and get the, uh, get the pan installed. There you can see it in all its glory. And I will say that, I guess you can't really see it from here. I will say that it was a lot easier than I thought, but I don't know if I got the gasket lined up right. I don't know if I got the bolts torqued right, so if the thing doesn't leak, I'll be shocked. But really, my main concern was getting the exhaust off, and that came off really easily, so. I'm not super worried about doing this job again if I have to. It's kind of a minor part. But at this point, we got our oil pump in, got our idler pulley on, we got our oil pan installed, and we're, you know, 30% of the way to being finished. So stay tuned for one more second. Welcome back. This thing has been on jack stands for like 11 months now. I'm not sure why. For some reason I just, uh... Haven't had the motivation to fix it, or to finish fixing it. So at this point I think we're gonna call it a will it run, cause I really don't know if it will or not. I got all the stuff buttoned up underneath, like the exhaust and, you know, different bolts and oil pan and whatnot. Now we're just going to do all this stuff topside and uh, see what happens. See if I can remember how this all goes back together. Now I'm going to add some oil. Because that's what this was all about fixing a big time oil leak. All right, I think you get the idea. It's hard to see the oil on this dipstick when it's brand new oil, but it's on there. So that's good. All right, I've copied my witness marks from the old belt to the new belt. And this line shows where it goes here. And then this line right there shows where it goes on this pulley down here. I know there's other ways to do this, like if the belt breaks and you can't put witness marks on the old belt, but I've only done this job a couple of times, so I don't really know how to do it too well. So I just kept these things lined up and putting the same marks on the belt as came off the old belt should line everything up and hopefully it will run. All right, we're kind of at the moment of truth. I don't have all the covers on and all that stuff. I want to make sure the belt is in the right spot. I only reinstalled this to get it out of the way of that hose that I had to put a clamp on. I do not have the spark plugs connected right now because I want to allow it to build a little bit oil pressure before it starts, if it starts. So we're going to, I don't know, give it a crank, see what happens. I really can't believe this eight year old battery that hasn't been running in six months still has juice in it. So uh, buy a Nissan battery, I guess. That thing's uh, pretty good. All right, we got all the Sparky Sparkersons plugged in. So if my calculations are right, uh, I, I really haven't made any calculations, but if I haven't screwed up too bad, this thing might start, which will be pretty incredible after uh, sitting here for 11 months now. All right, 
here goes nothing. I'm not going to go as far as to say that I'm amazed, but kinda. I think I need to tighten the exhaust up a little bit. And I got to do a lot of other uh, little nibbly stuff. So I'll see you when that's all done. Well, there she blows. Sounds like she's running okay. The timing belt stuff is definitely not as loud as it was before. So. It's got a little bit of a lag. See? I don't know what's causing that. It's got some noises and stuff, but we'll see how that works out. So I'm just gonna let it run up to temperature and uh, I guess that's it. The end of this 11 month saga of this car. So, uh,